Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. As I am sure you are expecting, today's cut the clutter is about this unprecedented grant of interim bail by the Supreme Court of India to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. Now, why is it unprecedented? Interim bail is granted in many cases routinely by courts across the country. It is unprecedented to the extent that this is being given to a political leader, in this case a chief minister, to campaign in an ongoing election campaign and also to campaign in an ongoing election campaign where the person is not a candidate. Arvind Kejriwal is not a candidate. His party has candidates. Now, even during the arguments, the prosecution side, that is the enforcement directorate side, they argued that there was no precedent. And if there was no precedent, how come the court was giving bail, interim bail to Arvind Kejriwal that for campaigning in an election, a bail had not been granted. And, this, and if this happens, this will become a precedent for all of the others to demand bail on the same basis. Now, the court, on the other hand, argued that yes, could the court said, yes, we agree. I'm paraphrasing everything, although it's not a long order, it's just an eight-page order, and we'll share a link with you, you can read it. The court said, while we accept this, but the fact is that interim bail is a principle that courts have accepted in various different cases, and it's been granted. In fact, there is an interesting couple of lines that the court says, and I will quote from the order. The court says, at this stage, it is not possible for us to either conclude the arguments or finally pronounce the judgment. What are they talking about? That's because Arvind Kejriwal is in Supreme Court with a special leave petition. Special leave petition questioning the legality of his arrest. He's not in Supreme Court seeking bail. He's there questioning the legality of his arrest. That case is going on. So the Supreme Court says we can't fast forward that. We can't immediately deliver our judgment there. But because that is now pending and there is urgency of an ongoing election campaign, we are granting this bail. So I will read out a few more lines for, for you. Then I will explain some of the politics of this and political implications of this. And then what I'm going to do is I will have two of my colleagues who you know well, Bhadra Sena, who covers the Supreme Court for us, and also Ananya Bhardwaj, who covers the agencies, investigations, and, and those areas for us to explain two different aspects of this story for us. One, the legal aspect that Bhadra will explain for us, and second, Ananya Bhardwaj, in terms of what is it that the ED, the CBI, etc. have in this case, what have they done so far and what is their course of action likely to be going ahead? So let me read first of all this passage, couple of couple of lines, couple of couple of passages from the Supreme Court judgment. Point number seven in the judgment on page two, the judges say this is judges Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta. They say at this stage, they say, and I quote, at this stage, it is not possible for us to either conclude the arguments or finally pronounce the judgment. However, there is an intervening factor which has prompted us to consider and pass the present order, namely 18th Lok Sabha general elections which are in progress. As the appeal is pending before us, we do not think it would be proper for us to direct the appellant Arvind Kejriwal to approach the trial court for interim bail or release. This may not be apt in view of the legal issues and contentions that are under examination and consideration before us. So once again, the judges are distancing themselves from the substantive questions raised in the case either by Kejriwal or by the prosecuting agency, which is an enforcement directorate. Then the judges use user expression, which immediately caught my eye. And also because I am also a curious being and I also believe that I am learning all the time and there is so little 
that I know and there is so much that I still have to know that I also found an expression in the order that is that that is para 8. They say it is no gain saying that general elections to Lok Sabha is the most significant and an important event this year as it should be in a national election year and then they say General elections supply the whiz viva to a democracy. Now, have you heard that expression before? I am sure some of you have. Whiz viva, when I researched this, I have not heard this before. Whiz viva basically means living force. That is the sense in which this has been used here. So, general election provides a living force to a democracy. But where does this expression come, come from? This expression comes actually from the 17th century debate in physics and math and this this was coined or this was coined or this was proposed by by a polymath of that period somebody who was a physicist physicist mathematician philosopher diplomat that's how many of these smart people used to be in that century because if you were smart at one thing you were smart at many other things think of Rabindranath Tagore for example so this was Gottfried Leibniz a German who between 1676 and 1689 AD came up with idea of of Viz Viva. His idea was more in the domain of physics. So this was a bit like this was a bit like again for simplicity if you take mass of an object and multiply it by the square of its velocity. So mass into square of velocity that gives you the equivalent as I read my physics was very poor and mathematics was worse right. I was really so relieved when I passed class 10 and I did not have to do any more math. And when I passed by pre-university or the equivalent of class 11 and beyond that did not have to do any physics. So I'm only repeating to you the definition I have read. So mass multiplied by square of its velocity which gives you 2x 2 times kinetic energy. So that is the expression used for life force. General elections being the life force of a democracy and that is the reasoning that the judges, eminent judges have used to grant this bail. However, they have said that the grant of this bail does not say anything about the merits of acquisitions against, against Kejriwal or also about the merits of his special leave put petition where he is questioning the legality of his arrest to begin with. That said, let's also look at some politics, what happens. Now, first of all, as you would expect, this will fire the imagination of Aam Aadmi Party because Aam Aadmi Party is a one-man party. Many of our parties now are one-man parties. In fact, almost all our parties now are one-man parties including the BJP because parties depend on that one key man or key woman. It doesn't have to be a male, right? Mamta Banerjee, for example. These are key person parties. So there, if that person is in jail, that has one impact. If that person is out of jail, it has another impact, even if the person is out of jail only for about three weeks. So that will fire up the cadre. It also fire up, fires up the opposition by and large because the coordination between India alliance partners has been flagging here and there. Morale is very important in a fight, particularly when you are you're an underdog by a long distance. And that's where this will give a new energy. And you can also see this in the statements from many opposition leaders. In fact, leaders of every opposition party have issued statements welcoming this and generally saying that this shows that justice can be done in this country. Justice will be done in this country if you fight for it. Now, once again, I have to put in a caveat that justice has been done only to the extent that he's been given time to campaign. It's not as if any view has been taken on allegations against him. So he's not been pronounced guilty or innocent. That's very clear. On the other hand, for the BJP, it is seen then as a letdown because the BJP says, BJP leaders are saying that the Supreme Court in this case has made a special dispensation for somebody just because he happens to be a prominent political leader. So I will share with you two tweets. The first is from Ahmadbi Party, from Atishi, who, who's a minister of Ahmadbi Party, also a very key functionary. You've seen him taking instructions from the chief minister, pretty much helping run the government in his name. And her tweet says, Ye satya ki vijay hai. It's victory of truth. Samvidhan ki jeet. 
इट्स ए विक्ट्री ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन भाजपा ने इस देश में लोकतंत्र को खत्म करने में कोई कसर नहीं छोड़ी भाजपा हैज लेफ्ट नो स्टोन अनटर्न इन ट्राइंग टू डिस्ट्रॉय डेमोक्रेसी इन दिस कंट्री लेकिन अब तानाशाही का अंत होगा बट नाउ इट विल मार्क द एंड ऑफ डिक्टेटरशिप दैट्स वॉट शी इज सेड एंड शी इज यूज टू हैश टैग्स हैश टैग मोदी कांट स्टॉप केजरीवाल एंड हैश टैग सत्यमेव जयते एट द अदर एंड ऑफ द आर्ग्यूमेंट इज ऑल्सो हितेश जैन वेरी वेल नोन लॉयर विद द बीजेपी इन फैक्ट ही हेड्स द बीजेपी इन मुंबई सिटी मुंबई प्रदेश बीजेपी ही इज अ फाइन लॉयर एंड ही इज मेड ए फाइन finally argued legal point so i'm sharing his tweet tweet thread with you please read that i'm not reading all of that that's a lot to read after after having read two paras from the supreme court judgment but the basic point he is making is that with this order the supreme court has and i am quoting him now the supreme court has carved out a special class swimming and this order he says and i quote is swimming in a sea of arbitrariness in effect because of political stature supreme court has created a new dispensation for arvind kejriwal because he is a political leader and a chief minister i am not paraphrasing and he says and i quote here that this turns article 14 of the constitution on its head what article 14 means that everybody is equal in the eyes of the law he says that this article says that the law will be the same for the prince and the proper but now the supreme court has created a special dispensation and this will have consequences going ahead so these are the arguments and counter arguments i have also explained some of the politics for you certainly this will have impact in the campaigning in delhi this will have impact in the campaigning in punjab also in haryana and in haryana aam aadmi party had built some support base they have a candidate and they also have a partnership with the congress party in haryana but generally for the opposition which has been living in the fear of the agencies and time in jail many of them are in jail and i will not be surprised if other opposition leaders who are in jail manish sodia for example or or hemant soren what is to stop them or k kavita what is to stop them from going to court now and saying listen there are elections in our in our states also we are also key political leaders give us also time to go and campaign in elections we will come back so we will see if that happens and how the courts deal with it that said now as i promised you bhadra sena and ananya bhardwaj will join me and they will explain the technicalities on both sides on the legal side and also on the prosecution investigation side so rukawat ke liye khed hai as we used to say or sorry for interruption for one Tenth of one second, and in one tenth of one second, I have two stellar colleagues with me. Bhadra, explain this order to us and also the implications. But you know what? In Supreme Court, they say you make your argument in three minutes. Yes. So I will. And uh, Bhadra is a lawyer as well. I won't ask for in an fact, extension. In fact, she was she was going to enter active practice <laughs> when we pulled her back to journalism. Well, um, I will take precisely three minutes. Um, as pointed out by you, Shekhar, this petition in the Supreme Court by Arvind Kejriwal is about his arrest, the legality of his arrest, and the subsequent remand that took place when he was arrested in March this year. But when this matter came to the Supreme Court and it was being heard last week for the first time, the Supreme Court indicated that as this matter will take some time. to get concluded and uh, the court may take some more time to decide on the merits of the arguments that has been raised before the court it thought of granting bail to arvind kejriwal for an interim period uh, so that he can participate in the electoral process and very specific query was pointed uh, to the lawyers of uh, arvind kejriwal asking uh, them about the date of the delhi elections so uh, a similar indication was given earlier this week and finally today the court assembled the judges assembled briefly for 2 minutes in the afternoon and indicated its order and 2 hours later an eight page order was uh, 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 delivered it it was uploaded on the website first of all i'll be very quick with the conditions and then i will explain the implication so this means that his bail period begins today and it will end on 1st of june and he has to surrender on 2nd of june the second condition is that he cannot visit the chief minister's office in the delhi secretariat 
The third condition is that he cannot sign any file. Now, just to recollect, Arvind Kejriwal's lawyer had given a statement to the court, given an undertaking to the court that he will not sign any file until he is uh, until he remains out. And this was after the court also expressed its view uh, to you know refrain him from signing any official files. But interestingly, what the court says is that he will not sign any file unless it is necessary for obtaining the lieutenant governor's approval. So the reason why this point has been included in the bail condition is because Kej Mr. Kejriwal's lawyer had specifically argued this point that he will not sign any file until the LG doesn't take any decision. So in, 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 in the sense if LG makes it a condition for the chief minister's signature to be there in the file to approve, to to approve, approve something. That's right. Then the fourth uh, condition is that he will not comment on his role in the case. But interestingly, the court has not stopped him from commenting about the case. Um, during uh, the hearing today, during the brief hearing today, there was a very specific request that was made by the Council of ED who and they wanted the court to restrain him completely. But the court simply said no and the, both the judges just got up and exited. So the condition stops him from commenting on his on his role in the case, but not on the so, case completely. So, so he can say this case is all fake. That's right. Wants, that's right? right. Yes. But he doesn't, he can't say that my role is nothing. Yes. I have no role. Yes. Okay? yes. Uh, and also if he's on a stage, then all the others can talk against the case. But he can he, just be silent and all the others can say this man is innocent and he's a victim. Yes, right? yes. Let me just recollect when the court gave bail to Sanjay Singh, who's also a co-accused in this case, they had imposed a similar condition on him. And today when the ED lawyers asked for uh, a more stringent condition on Mr. Kejriwal, they referred to Sanjay Singh's bail condition and said that unfortunately that bail condition has not stopped him from making or commenting uh, 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 on the case. In response to this argument, both the judges smiled back at the ED council and remarked, well, you can counter them by making stronger statements. <laughs> <laughs> so they just, uh, yeah. Then now the fourth, uh, uh, sorry, the fifth condition is that KG, Arvind Kejriwal cannot interact with any witness in the case or sign any file related to this particular case. As pointed out by you, the grant of bail is not an expression or, or of opinion on the merits of the case. Now, this order, today's order has been given specifically in view of the ongoing Lok Sabha elections. And in fact, as you mentioned earlier, the court has commented on the fact that Lok Sabha elections is the national election. It's a general election and Kejriwal this is... This Viva, we learned something new. Yes. So thank you judges. Yes. And Kejriwal is a leader of one of the national parties. And this is a very peculiar condition or circumstances associated with his case. And that is why they considered granting him bail. They rejected, interestingly, they rejected Enforcement Directorate's uh, argument uh, which they had made while opposing the uh, court's suggestion to grant interim bail to Arvind Kejriwal and that argument was that he doesn't have any fundamental right to campaign and that grant of bail to him will actually create a precedent. It will create an unreasonable class of politicians to whom the court is going to you know extend some special status. It will defy the equality provision given in the constitution because there may be similarly placed people who are right now in jail. They could be traders facing PMLA proceedings. They could be farmers facing PMLA proceedings. And tomorrow they can approach the court citing this order to seek interim bail saying that our businesses are being yeah, affected. Yeah, but the court has said this is not about going and uh, harvesting your crops that's or right. running your business. This is election. That's why it is important. True. So do you think others will now go to court using this as a precedent? I don't think so because, you know, if you notice, the court has very specifically pointed out the peculiar circumstance. So it is an exception. You know, which because the, he's a chief minister. Because he's the chief so why minister. Why can't Manish Sisodia go there and say, I am a deputy, deputy, deputy chief minister? It all depends on also on the allegations against him. Right. That is the thing. So as far as this particular case is concerned, right now the court has not commented on the merits of his involvement in the case. Because what they have said, because they are yet to hear both the sides. The Both the sides are yet to conclude the hearing. But 
just to point out they definitely have considered one argument of the enforcement directive and which is that Arvind Kejriwal did not respond to the summons of ED that were issued and, to and, him. And in fact, in, in fact, there's an important line because they say it's a negative. Right? Yes, uh, yes. That's an important yes, line. Yes, but let me also point out one more thing over here, Shekhar, that the court, what has actually weighed in the minds of the judges is the fact that his arrest was a delayed one. In fact, today again orally, although they have mentioned it in the order as well, but not of course, they have not been so explicit about it. But in the court today, while uh, conveying their uh, you know decision to give him bail, they very specifically said that the ECIR was registered way back in 2022, in somewhere I think in October 2022, but he was arrested in March this year. So for one and a half, half years, he has been you, you out. You had the time. You had the time. So for 21 days, here and there, doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So in, in para 15, the judges say the prosecution has right, that is ED, has rightly pointed out that the appellant, Arvind Kejriwal, had failed to appear in spite of nine notices slash summons, first of which was issued in October 2023. This is a negative factor. That's, That's what right. the judges say. This is a negative factor. But there are several other facets which we are required to take in consideration. And then they go on to say he is leader of one of the national parties. Elections are going on. Acquisitions are serious, etc. And then yes. they explain the exception. Yes. Ananya, what is the case? Where does his name feature? Uh, what are the prosecutors in this case, particularly ED, doing? And what is the likely course of action from them? So, uh, we have explained it before also that this case pertains to alleged irregularities uh, basically in uh, including modification of the now scrapped excise policy and basically giving undue advantage to certain groups basically including a waiver fee or increasing the number of percentage of profit and then giving that margin to them as kickbacks in exchange of funds. Now, the case essentially was registered by the Central Bureau of Investigation, which is a case of corruption. Uh, in this, uh, the allegations were of corruption and how basically money was sought by modifying uh, a certain policy by the government. And then ED jumped in to, uh, to register a case under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act because there was money involved. However, uh, where does Arvind Kejriwal's name feature in any of these ED charge sheets, documents or e ED equivalent of FIRs? Right. So an ECIR was registered, which is an ED equivalent of FIR, FIR. and seven uh, charge sheets, that is prosecution complaints have been filed till now, uh, seventh one being filed today, was filed today. And in none of these charge sheets, Arvind Kejriwal's name has appeared. Also, his name, of course, is not there in the ECIR. The reason being, I mean, when we speak to the investigators, they tell us that investigation is a continuous process. Now, when the first FIR was registered by CBI, Arvind Kejriwal's name was not there in the in the FIR. In fact, uh, Mr. Manish Sisodia's name was also not there in the FIR. But during the course of investigation, when they started probing this entire uh, liquor scam, uh, what they're calling it, then they got evidence, then they got certain documents, uh, uh, certain chats, etc. that they have cited, uh, that CBI has cited to suggest that Arvind K. Jival was also involved in this uh, entire scam. Now, they also called Arvind K. Jival for questioning. I'm talking about CBI first. And uh, Arvind Kejriwal had in fact also gone to CBI uh, and CBI had said that we are not calling him an accused. We just need to confront him with certain documents that we have seized in our uh, during our investigation in certain rates that we carried out. So we need to confront him with those facts. So he had gone. Uh, uh, this was in April last year. He had also gone for questioning. And then the ED came in. Um, of course, he skipped nine summons. Bhadra also uh, spoke about it, that how it is uh, considered to be a negative factor by the court now. He didn't go uh, when the ED called him for questioning. So now, as far as his name is concerned, ED has now, uh, every now and then, while uh, gaining, uh, uh, while uh, they went to the court to seek his custody or extension of his custody, has mentioned the role of Arvind Kejriwal before the court. 
and uh, but his name till now has not appeared either in any of the charge sheets seven charge sheets that ed has filed or his name of course was not there in the eci eci that was filed by ed now uh, because we've gone through all the remand notes whatever the court had told uh, whatever ed you, had but you've been reading all of these carefully yes uh, so basically the uh, allegation against arvin k jiwal uh, i'll just brief briefly summarize one is that he took 100 crore rupees from the south group that is uh, he, he as in aam aadmi party aam aadmi party and in in one of the remand notes that we went through there is a chronology so the chronology is that in 20, 2021 there was a meeting that happened in his office in the secretariat in which he met uh, k kavita uh, who has been charged cheated today uh, he met k kavita and she told him that she is interested in uh, the liquor trade the liquor business in delhi so uh, in uh, in the remand note ed says that k kavita in her statement has said that he asked me that you give me rupees 100 crores uh, that we will be this is a fund for aam aadmi party and in return we can make like a favorable policy for you so that you can invest and you can have a good business in delhi so these are the this is what the ed is telling the court uh, then there's another thing in which uh, 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 the ed says that manguta shrinivasallu reddy who is the ysr congress mp he also approached arvin kejriwal his statement is also part of the ed records and he also approached kejriwal saying that i saw your ad and i'm also interested in the liquor business so kejriwal told him that i have i'm already in talks with k kavita why don't you speak to her then in another statement uh, mr reddy says that uh, when i spoke to k kavita she told me that arvin k jiwal has asked me for 100 crores why don't you pitch in 50 crores uh, uh, from uh, out of that 100 crores so that we can do it together so th- these are the kind of allegations second being that this money of uh, 100 crores i mean there was no 100 crores but an amount of about 30 crores uh, was sent in two installments uh, to offices uh, of Uh, aam aadmi party in bags full of cash and there are also statements of office boys and staff of uh, you know our uh, k kavita her chartered accountant that have been uh, included in the investigation by ed saying that this money did go uh, from the south group to aam aadmi party and now today what they have done is that they have charged sheeted several people from this company called chariot productions which is mr vijayanair's company and basically that was handling all the media and advertising etc for aam aadmi party saying that these people were the ones who actually uh, uh, you know look was were looking after the entire campaign in goa so suggesting that this money which was basically sought by arvind kejriwal was given to him by south group and this was done all through hawala transactions and was used in the goa elections so just to brief it so basically a dual role has been attributed to arvind kejriwal one is uh, individual role for uh, being the chief minister bringing in a policy and then modifying it yeah. thereby causing a loss to the exchequer second is a vicarious li- liability um, by virtue of being the head of the aam aadmi party so interestingly the aam aadmi party was not made an accused in the case but uh, just to remind you during uh, the hearing in the supreme court on manish sisodia's bail a very specific question was put to the ed the enforcement director director as to what is the role of the aam aadmi party and thereafter the ed yeah. decided to name aam aadmi party also as an accused under the pmla so thereby uh, kejriwal arvind kejriwal being the leader of aam aadmi party is also uh, liable is also vicariously liable for the entire alleged scam another yeah. another key thing is also that there were some documents which were part of the group of ministers uh, where this excise policy was discussed so to uh, key, some key documents were also found with south group apparently these documents were leaked to them much before it was submitted to the council of ministers yeah. so this is also one allegation that there is against arvind kejriwal yeah. which so, is a so key so as one. you can see this there are many complexities the prosecution also has a lot of stuff right and uh, i suspect now that this they will see this as a little setback that he's got bail and he's out and he will say whatever he wants to say on the case not about his own role and people around him will speak and the opposition will make it a political thing so politics and legal issues and prosecution issues and defense issues they will all go together what we will hear about most of all over the next 3 weeks however is 
politics and how that plays out we'll keep bringing it back to you meanwhile thank you very much both of you i know both of you have lots of stories to file bhadra and ananya in fact i know you are headed for shrinagar in the morning